All right, so this is something I really wanted to talk about. Public domain characters. Very briefly, for those of you that don't know, the public domain is where creative works that are unprotected by intellectual property law exist. Now, this usually happens because the rights for these works have been forfeited or have expired. Characters and stories can be adapted without fear of lawsuits. For example, Sherlock Holmes stories are in the public domain. That's why we can get multiple Sherlock Holmes movies and shows from different studios running at the same time. So you, the person watching this video, can publish and profit from whatever Sherlock story you wish without paying anyone a dime. The other thing that should be noted is that you can't use any original concepts from other storytellers. For example, I can tell the story of the Jungle Book, but I can't use any of the Disney songs from their version. That's how we ended up with John Favreau's and Andy Serkis's Jungle Book movies in production at the same time. So that should cover the basics. Other common characters that exist in the public domain are Dracula, Robin Hood, King Kong, Zorro, Alice, and King Arthur. A more obvious point you'll notice is that a lot of these characters are from myths and legends. Marvel and DC both use Hercules in their comics. What you may not know is that DC has their own version of Thor, but he's not important, he rarely gets used. For this video, I specifically wanted to focus on less common, less popular, older characters from comic books. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're gonna start off with Mr. Scarlet, created by France Heron and Jack Kirby. First appearance, WoW Comics number one in 1940. Brian Butler's occupation was district attorney operating in Fawcett City. Now tell me if any of this sounds familiar. Basically we have super athlete with incredible detective skills and he fought crime with his adopted son, the Whiz Kid. Mr. Scarlet wore a belt with a host of gadgets. Any of that remind you of anyone? He also has flight and a ray gun which he barely uses. Fun fact. He died in Justice League of America number 137. Next up we have The Woman in Red, created in 1940 by Richard E. Hughes. First appearance, Thrilling Comics number 2. Police detective Peggy Allen actually gets credited for being the first female crime fighter to wear a mask. What I like about this character is that she often goes undercover during her crime investigation sometimes under the guise of a nurse or student. Now as impractical as her outfit is, this might be my favorite costume design out of this group today. I find the long draping red dress to be really striking and it really clearly stands out. Then we have the Black Terror created by Richard E. Hewson and Donald Gabrielson. First appearance, exciting comics number 9, Nemesis of Evil. Now, you wouldn't be foolish if you assumed he was a villain at first glance. Personally, I think his design is pretty cool despite how villainous it looks. Bob Benton was a pharmacist that created and inhaled the chemical compound he called Former Ethers. The formula gave him super strength, agility, stamina, durability. Black Terror was the most popular character at Nador Comics. This is a character that changes a lot in personality and powers. Sometimes he's more Punisher, sometimes he's more Batman, and other times he's more Superman. And then we get to Daredevil of Lev Gleason Publications, created by Jack Bender and Don Rico. First appearance, Silver Street Comics number 6, September 1940. Now this one is interesting. I've never come across this character before. Now get this. Bart Hill was rendered mute after witnessing his father's brutal death. Now instead of clubs like the other guy, he uses boomerangs. Hill is a skilled boxer and martial artist pretty similar to the other guy, but sometimes with an added healing factor, and more recently he can control protruding spikes from his body. Now this is where we get to the fun part. Stardust the Super Wizard. Stardust is one of the more goofy characters, making his first appearance in Fantastic Comics number 1, 1939. 
Stardust knowledge of space and advanced scientific capabilities made him extremely powerful. He's a physically large humanoid alien with a host of beams and rays powered by his belt. So here's what we got. There's some pretty wild powers here, but I'm not going to go over everything, just some standout abilities. We'll start with the transforming powers. So Stardust can transform his enemies into icicles. He can also transform his enemies into rats and then transform himself into a panther to hunt these rat enemies. Now for beams and rays, we got Concentrator Ray, combines many people into one, rarefying beam, calm strong winds, thought recording ray, telepathically scans the population to reveal criminal intent, reducing ray, shrinks objects or people. Now my favorite is the secret ray, it summons skeletons of innocent murder victims. There's more but that's all we're going to focus on. To be honest, like a lot of old school and golden age superheroes in storylines, his powers seem to be whatever the writer needed at that moment. Thor's hammer was majorly guilty of this. That thing would have a new ability every month. While doing research for this video, I noticed a lot of similar things amongst these old school superheroes. Excessive patriotism, which makes sense considering the times. Actually, I'll name a few. Captain Freedom, Super American, Yankee Girl, Man of War, The Eagle, The Liberator, American Crusader, Minuteman, American Eagle, and the best superhero name I've ever heard, Commando Yank. Another thing I noticed was a lot of legal professionals and law enforcement donning the mask and cape. Interesting that in 1940s it was popular for fictional characters that work within the law during the day to go outside of the law at night. I find it interesting that societally we've basically always accepted fictional stories where sometimes legal law enforcement methods just aren't always enough. Finally, there's a lot of imitating ideas and concepts going around. There's a ton of characters that are either based on or were directly inspired by Batman specifically. The research for this video was actually very interesting for me, definitely going to be a part 2, there's some really cool characters that I didn't get to. As always, thanks for watching.